Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with this Razer E300, which is particularly slow, going up hills especially it really struggles. So what we're going to be doing here today is we're going to do a hack on the speed controller to give it a bit more speed and torque. Now, if you've seen my channel in the past, you've seen that over the years I've played around with a lot of Razer E200s and 300s, and I've done various modifications and hacks to them. This one in particular does have new batteries, but apart from that, it is completely stopped. So the first thing that we're going to do is to get this top deck off the scooter. And to do that, we've got a Phillips head screwdriver, some pliers, and a three mil Allen key. Now, importantly, when we take all of these screws and fasteners off, what we want to do is lay them down somewhere in order so we know exactly where they go back because they are slightly different lengths in the screws and it'll make it far easier when it comes to the reassembly process. All right, so let's start at the back. This is where we need our pliers because there is a nut under this screw that we need to get the pliers onto. And here's my Phillips head screwdriver. And there's the uh, nut that's come out. So what I will do is pop that screw into the nut straight away so we don't lose it. And we'll get the second one out now. And then we'll move along to the screws in the center. And as I said, paying careful attention to just putting them down in the order that they actually come out. It just makes everything so much easier. And finally, the screws in the front. So we can get that cover off. As you can see, this has already had the batteries replaced in this scooter with a set of brand new batteries. I have other videos on the channel, not of this specific scooter, but of other Razer E300s and 200s where I swap the batteries out. So this is the uh, speed controller here in the front, and that's what we actually want to get out next. So what we will do is disconnect all of the connectors to the speed controller to start with, just like that. Looks like we've still got some power connection going to it. So with everything disconnected, we can see that the speed controller is actually just held in with a couple of Phillips screws and then the entire speed controller can come out. So with that speed controller out, let's uh, open it up. So you can see it's just got four Phillips head screws on the top, holding that little aluminum heat sinkish type top on. And there you go. We're just able to pop that out. Now, some of these are actually glued in a lot more than this one was. Now, that speed controller actually came apart a lot easier than I was expecting. In the past, I've seen some of these speed controllers where they've actually really glued them together and they can actually be quite difficult to get apart. Now, as you can see, I actually have my Stanley knife here because if you do have a problem, you may just have to cut around the edge uh, on the transition from that plastic to that aluminum heat sink. And then some of, the, some of them you really have to get a screwdriver in as well just to leverage it right out. But anyway, let's have a closer look at this speed controller and let's see exactly how we're gonna modify it here today. All right, so just looking at this speed controller, we can see fundamentally it's got a couple of MOSFETs. Now what they're going to be doing is delivering the voltage and current directly from the batteries down to the motor when this device switches on. Now looking detail on the board itself, I'll just get you into position. We can see there's a shunt right in there. Now what that shunt is doing is actually limiting the amount of current that can deliver to the motor. So what we can do is we can increase the thickness of that shunt now the easiest way to do that, rather than disassembling the speed control, is actually to identify where the shunt comes out on the other side of the board. And I can see that this is one end of the shunt and the other end of the shunt is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get a piece of copper and we'll solder that across there. Now you could use any sort of metal, um, but I think copper's probably the best. So we'll give that a go and see how it goes. All right, so we've got this copper here and we can see it's roughly going to be that long that we require. Let's see how that's gonna go in there. 
I'd say that'll be just about perfect size there to go across. So let's solder that into position. All right, so we might just put a little bit of flux in here just to help that solder uh, attach and start by just putting a bit of solder on the ends of the copper. And then we'll build up a bit more on the board itself on the end points as quickly. So as you can see, we've managed to solder that copper shunt on this side of the board there. And now we're gonna reassemble the speed controller, put it back into the scooter, and we'll give it a quick test run. Okay, so we'll make sure we get our gasket back into position. So the gasket clearly went in like that. And then we will get our speed controller reassembled. Just placed in to the body like that and get everything fastened together nicely. It's then just a matter of reinstalling the speed controller. Start by screwing it in, then connect all the cables, install the battery, and finally reinstall the support strap. All right, so we've got our modified speed controller reassembled. We've got the batteries hooked up. Let's switch it on. Oh, well, it comes on, so that's always a good sign. And let's just see quickly if it's actually got any throttle response. Oh, that's good. It's actually got a bit of throttle response now. So what I'm gonna do is I'll quickly pop the cover back on and let's take it for a test ride. There you go, you saw it here. Before I had to push, now I don't have to push and the scooter just glides up this hill with ease. folks an absolute massive improvement in the torque and speed of this razor e300 which other than that modification that we've just done to the speed controller is a completely stock razor e300 i've got other razor e300s and i'm planning to other mods in the future you may have seen the big motor razor well i've actually got to get that going that's got a, a big 500 or 700 watt motor in it and i'm going to do some lithium batteries for that as well so if you have liked this post, do feel free to like, share, and subscribe to the next one. Have a good evening.